I want to give a review of books that have to do with mind control. The biggest, I mean it's big, but it's also big, uh, it's written by this lady named Bryce Taylor, who says that she was the slave of two persons, or sort of that she was owned. You know, you can buy them, you auction these people off. And she was bought by either Bob Hope, you know, comedian, or, and or Henry Kissinger. I think it was Bob Hope owned her and leased her out to Kissinger. Are we to believe stuff like that? Well, I believe this book sounds, sounds believable to me. And she hasn't been heard from in many years, so you wonder. She's still a, only about 60, if that. Where is she? I don't know. Another girl named Kathy O'Brien wrote this one. I would tend to doubt that she is actually the author, though she probably, the stories in it, written in the first person, about her, she probably did give that information to someone. I'm not sure. I'm not accusing her in any way of plagiarizing it from something. I just mm, don't feel that she... I don't feel she's free to talk like that, so why this book came out, I don't know. But it has loads of information, and instead of being sexy like this book, is extremely unsexy. Like she tells how she was the ambassador to um, different countries to try to sell them on the idea of the policy. It must have been during the Clinton years. It was called Education 2000. You know, like no child left behind a not up on it, but bad things that have happened in our school system, and that, and her idea of, well, she, I should say, she was so mind-controlled as a child, and, and she points to many celebrities, and so does Bryce Taylor point to many Hollywood people that are totally owned and run by someone, and they don't have any freedom to talk or do whatever they want. Uh, here's another one, which I put great faith in this. It's it has a kind of a woo-woo name, Secrets Don't Tell, but never mind that. The subtitle should be the title, Encyclopedia of Hypnosis. And that's just what it is. The lady who wrote it, Carla Emery, she had come from another field entirely. She was working on the homestead movement or something, and she had a big following. And then how she was able to put all this together, I don't know, but it's a, it looks like a very uh, responsible... This is the Manchurian Candidate, a novel. Probably then she tells you how the hypnosis worked in that factor. And um, who wants to deal with something that weighs a ton? It's too bad it's like that, but it's a fantastic book. So, mind control there. Now, another man named Jim Keith, who, and she is deceased, and he died at the age of 56, Jim Keith. This book... This book gives like a printout of different people's story, for example. He gives a chapter on Bryce Taylor, he gives one on Kathleen Sullivan, on Claudia Mullen, blah, blah, blah. But he also gives and one on Tavistock, which is like the big daddy organizer of everything about this, and the organizer of media, so that everybody's being tricked at all times by the media. That's under the Tavistock Institute. And then he does things like beam warfare, uh, this is, that's reliable, I think. Now, I haven't even looked at this one yet, so I'm sorry I can't comment. It's called My Life Among the Serial Killers, but my opinion is none of the serial killers were ever real. Deaths may have occurred while they were doing their thing, but it was never something they... I mean, if you haven't had serial killers in all of human history, what, you're suddenly going to have ten of them between the year 1960 and 1980? And um, either they were, you know, Manchurian candidates, like just programmed to go out and do it, or I think in many cases they didn't do it at all. They weren't even in that location when it happened. That's what I would say of the boy in um, Australia named Martin Bryant. Everybody thinks he killed all those people in the Broad Arrow Cafe or whatever it's called. No, he didn't. And here's this lady. Why don't you check her out? She claims to be an MD. Mm. Her life among the serial killers. Nonsense. Now, four more here, which I am trying to demonstrate that there's a, an, a proper field of study out there. Start with this one. Apparently, you can go to the yearly conference of this group called, whatever they're called, 
international group of they study dissociation and I'm truly just guessing on this figure that I'm going to put out total speculation I'd say probably half of it is legit that is people really studying it and the other half are probably meant to be what they call gatekeepers in the field of disinformation and that is they bring you so far they will show you how the thing works but you know they won't give you too much they'll give you enough that then they cover the field so you don't have someone else bother to go out and try to be the scholar in that area because it's already been taken care of I suppose this is monthly I don't know official journal of the International Society blah blah sorry that's all I can say on that but the real expert on that subject of dissociation is this lady her name is Trish Fotheringham, and this is a psychologist in California named Ellen Lacter, and this is a lengthy interview, and it says, Survivor Speaks Out, and she talks about ritual mind control, and what she, the word ritual means it happens during a rite, like black robes and candles and altars and carrying on, as though it were religion, but probably, and again, that's just my opinion, the, the religious gloss was put on it later and that the whole purpose of it is to produce programmed people uh, I mean, you get you get tortured as a child so you're two years old and someone splits your mind off and um, I mean there's this person fathering him gives in another book which is edited by Randy Noblet and it has chapters by different people and her chapter is brilliant and tells you really the technique by which you can by which her mind was split into different pieces and uh, so there's that but then there's this kind of more more in the field of you know doing things directly into the brain with whatever they're doing this one is pretty old stuff 1970 Called simultaneous man and you see two men here one guy has he really lived those memories it was his life but then they put it into the other man I don't know how. and I, I don't say that that actually happened this is a novel this man then sort of becomes the first man because he's living through the memories of the dad from the other man and recently at the University of Washington if you google for something called google for professor bathing caps and boffin remote control and you'll get this study which I suppose is federally funded and uh, legit and it's like that one one professor with his bathing cap and his he puts his thoughts into the mind of the other person okay. and um, I think that's all I'll say about that except that I don't see how any American could not want to find out what's going on this girl's husband was a dentist at University of Southern California. I'm, I'm not quite sure that was the dental school he was at, but makes you kind of wonder what's going on with dentists. And um, she was sent to many military bases as a child. In fact, much of this torture of children took place right on the bases. So if you're American, you're responsible for that. You better check it out. It's called Thanks for the Memories.